All right, welcome. <laughs> oh, okay. Apparently, uh, we have a studio audience now. They sound pumped up. Yeah, no, they're fake. It's uh, it's just a recording. Oh. Okay. Either way, uh, we've got another chilling unsolved true crime story that we're gonna like solve, right? Is that what we do on the show? I I have no idea. That makes two of us. Cool. And with us as always, running the show, is our producer. (laughs) Fresh from rehab, as I understand. He looks so healthy. Totes, you're doing great, creepy pigeon. All right. So today, in this episode, we're going to explore the disappearance of the man in the green pajamas, which on its own just sounds dumb, but looking at it via the context of this real life vanishing, like, what the fuck? I'm excited. I love mysteries that include sus clothing choices. Samesies. So let's take a look at the case. In the spring of 1959, The bizarre disappearance of Bruce Nelson Campbell from a Jacksonville, Illinois motel room gripped the heart of middle America. The ominous circumstances shrouding his vanishing act left everyone perplexed. He simply wandered into the night dressed in a pair of quaint green pajamas and was never seen again. This cryptic event etched a mark on the annals of unsolved mysteries eerily dubbed the disappearance of the man in the green pajamas. Bruce Campbell, aged 57, and his wife, Mabelita, embarked on a journey from Northampton, Massachusetts to Illinois. The purpose of their trip should have been a joyful one, to meet their newly born grandchild, the offspring of their son, Bruce Jr., who served as an assistant professor of chemistry at McMurray College in Jacksonville. However, the arduous drive took a toll on Campbell. The New England stockbroker fell ill His once sharp mind became clouded, his sense of direction dimmed. Upon reaching Jacksonville, Mrs. Campbell decided that the two would lodge at the Sandman Motel, a quaint family-owned establishment characteristic of the motor lodges of that era. Each room had its own entrance, and parking was right at the doorstep. Campbell was immediately settled into bed upon check-in. His concerned son, Bruce Jr., arranged for Dr. E.C. Bone, a local physician, to examine him. Dr. Bone prescribed medication in the hopes of aiding Campbell's sleep, but it proved ineffective. Several days passed before Campbell exhibited any signs of improvement. Dr. E.C. Bone, this cannot be a real story. Oh, but it is. I mean, I don't have the capacity to make this shit up. I'm a fucking dog. I can barely speak English. All right, well, I think it's pretty clear what happened to this guy. Dude was trafficked by Dr. Bone. Doc gave him some drugs and kidnapped him for sex work. (gasps) Why, of course. Case solved. Or is it? What is wrong with you? (laughs) I'm like trying to create an air of intrigue to keep people in suspense so that they watch the whole video. Kind of like a Keith Morrison thing. Yeah, that's not working. (laughs) Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. I am not great at being dramatic, uh, but how about we get the real Keith Morrison in here to show us how it's done? (laughs) Oh, no? Oh, he didn't want to come on the show? That's that's strange. You'd you'd think he'd want to make an appearance. All right, uh, can we, like... Cut to some footage of Keith Morrison? No? Copyright issues. Oh, okay, okay. Let's just, uh, can we, can we just put up a child's drawing of Keith Morrison? Are, are we allowed to do that? Yes, okay. Yeah, there we go. That's Keith Morrison, uh, the guy from Dateline, very popular true crime host. He, he does the, the thing, the thing that I was talking about. I think you made your point. Good job. (laughs) All right, fuck off. On the evening of April 14th, Campbell had a visit with his family. 
Bruce Jr. recalled that his father remained rational but still disoriented during their final encounter. That night, Mrs. Campbell mentioned that her husband on two occasions asked whether their station wagon parked outside their motel room was secure. She assured him that it was indeed locked before retiring to sleep. At 2.15 a.m., Mrs. Campbell awoke to find the other double bed in the room unoccupied. Her husband had vanished. Panic set in as she frantically searched the room, only to discover that he was nowhere to be found. The room's door was ajar, and there was no trace of him in the parking lot. The motel's desk clerk stated that he had not seen anyone pass by. Their car remained untouched and locked in the lot, with Campbell's wallet, money, shoes, eyeglasses and car keys left behind. Due to her husband's frailty and disorientation, Mrs. Campbell promptly contacted the police. Upon their arrival, she provided a description of her tall, balding spouse, noting that he had a slight limp. At the time of his disappearance, he was clad in bright green pajamas, a wristwatch, and a ring bearing the Delta Upsilon fraternity crest. <laughs> like, can you imagine waking up to find your crazy-ass husband just up and bounced while you were asleep? <laughs> and you're just like, ah, fuck. Well, that sucks. Uh, my husband literally just ran out the door in a psychotic state. Uh, dressed in some ridiculous green pajamas. Uh, this is a problem. I'm thinking Bruce's actions were all deliberate. He probably made up the whole, I'm losing my mind thing. He was overwhelmed with his new grandfather status and he decided to run off with his mistress and leave his current life behind. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe. I mean, it seems like it was super easy to go off the grid and start fresh before modern technology. But wouldn't you at least take your shoes? He had shoes. <laughs> oh, wait, no, 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 no. His shoes were found in the locked car. All right, so in my understanding of what happened, dude was just running around in the wilderness barefoot and like, uh, you know, according to clinical psychology textbooks, running around without your shoes is like the first sign of madness. He had another pair of shoes, I'm sure of it. <laughs> what? Wait, no, 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 no. People only had one pair of shoes in the 1950s. Everyone knows that, it's like a historical fact. That is definitely not a historical fact. Uh, he had shoes in the room. <laughs> All right, no, okay, let's Google check. Hey, uh, creepy pigeon, look up how many pairs of shoes an individual person owned in the 1950s. <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of look like an Alexa. Um, there's something about those beady red eyes and just like the way you move that feels very robotic. <laughs> okay, 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 never mind, never mind. You're useless. Extensive searches were conducted by the police, scouring the darkened streets of downtown Jacksonville, yet Campbell remained elusive. The next day, local firefighters and a barrage of students from McMurray College and later Jacksonville High School joined the search efforts. Despite the widespread hunt and numerous reports of tall hitchhikers in the surrounding area, including Whitehall, Murrayville, Woodson, New Berlin and Alexander, the case remained unsolved. Police Chief Ike Flynn's words encapsulated the frustration. We have looked every place that has been suggested and have run out of ideas on what to do next. A psychic's cryptic hint suggested Campbell might be seven miles from Jacksonville, northeast or northwest of the city. Unsurprisingly, this ethereal clue proved fruitless. The only substantial lead came from a farmer living several miles northwest of Jacksonville. He reported hearing shouts on the night of Campbell's disappearance. Yet, a search of the area yielded nothing, and Police Chief Flynn conceded that this case was one of the most perplexing mysteries in the city's history. The search for Bruce Nelson Campbell, the man in the green pajamas, continued for days, weeks, and eventually years. Mabelita Campbell reluctantly returned home after two weeks of futile searching. Nevertheless, the family clung to hope until 1967, when Campbell was officially declared dead. 
Mrs. Campbell passed away in 2004, never learning her husband's fate. Months of relentless searching by the Jacksonville police prompted the FBI to launch its own investigation. On the first anniversary of Campbell's disappearance, it was revealed that the family had exhausted their savings on private investigators who distributed Campbell's photo and description to police departments nationwide, offering a $5,000 reward for information. The reward has gone unclaimed as the whereabouts of Campbell remain a mystery. Regrettably, the FBI fared no better than the private investigators as they found no trace of Campbell. This enigmatic case marked the final significant investigation of police chief Ike Flynn's career. Flynn retired just weeks after the disappearance and Charles Runkle took his place. Flynn, despite being off duty, remained haunted by the case until his passing, continually checking for any new leads. To this day, the mystery of the man in the green pajamas endures, with Campbell having walked into the dark, desolate expanse of Jacksonville's Black Knight, never to be heard from again. Wow, they really went all out looking for this guy and found nothing? Where did he go? Wait, so did we solve this one? <laughs> I mean, we offered a couple theories. Um, went crazy and died in the wilderness. Uh, met up with someone and started a new identity. Uh, human trafficked. Maybe he just fucking imploded. I mean, these are all some pretty decent ideas. People only watch this show for the pigeon anyway. And he's back on drugs. The audience loves that. <laughs> All right, so that was the enigmatic case of the man in the green pajamas. What do you think happened to the 57-year-old stockbroker who seemingly vanished without a trace? Let us know in the comments below. Do it or we kill off the pigeon. <laughs> <laughs>